section 6.3, example 5. So a random variable is normally distributed. So again, immediately I think of that normal curve. I'm going to draw every single time with a mean of 8.5. So we'll put 8.5 in the middle. And a standard deviation of 3.215, which we'll come back to in a second. So let's find the probability that x is greater than 8, so 8 will be right here, greater than we shade to the right, and x is less than 12. So 12 is somewhere over here, less than we shade to the left. And this one's really hard without drawing the curve. So and means overlap. So what parts did I shade for both? So that'll be the middle, because that's the overlap. If it said or, it would be different. We'll see an or in a little bit. But and is overlap. So the overlap is really just going to be in between 8 and 12. So we needed the curve to see that. So let's go ahead and find z-scores. So we'll find a z-score for 8. We'll do 8 minus the mean of 8.5 divided by standard deviation. And then we'll do the same thing for 12 minus 8.5 divided by standard deviation of 3.215. Let's find both z-scores. So we'll subtract 8 minus 8.5, enter, divide by 3.215, and my first z-score is negative 0.155. 156, that's going to round up. And then 12 minus 8.5, enter, divide by 3.215 and we get a z-score of 1.089. And so now that we have z-scores, we can find the area or the probability by using normal CDF. And so normal CDF is just in between, so negative 0.156 up to 1.089. So we go second distribution, normal CDF, negative 0.156, comma, 1.089, enter. And we get a probability or area of 0.4239. So z-scores, and then we find area. Let's sketch the same curve again. So we still have a mean of 8.5 in the middle. But now we're going to do an or. Remember, or means either, so not necessarily the overlap. So less than 9. Less than is to the left. Or, so less than 9, or greater than 15. So 15 is probably somewhere over here, and greater than will be to the left. So this one looks like we actually have two areas to find. The yellow area, because it's an or, it's either or, so we can add the two pieces together. And area two is my green one, or the one greater than 15 if you used a different color. So we need to find a z-score. So let's find a z-score for 9 and 15. So 9 will be 9 minus the mean of 8.5 over 3.215. And 15 will be 15 minus the mean of 8.5 over 3.215. So for 9, minus 8.5, divide by 3.215, we get a z-score of 0.156. And then for 15, we get 15 minus 8.5, divide by z, uh, standard deviation, 3.215, we get a z-score of 2.0. Two, two. So I'm going to find both areas and then I'll just add them together. So area one is yellow for me, the one on the left. And so we'll do normal CDF. The lower endpoint will be negative infinity because we just keep going. Negative 10 to the 99, comma 0.156. And then area 2, that's the one on the right, over here. 
we'll use normal CDF again. 2.022 is my lower end point, because using z squares up to infinity. So up to 10 to the 99. So second distribution, normal CDF, negative 10 to the 99, 2.156, and we get 0 0.5620 for the first area. And the second area, we'll do normal CDF again, 2.022 up to 10 to the 99. And we get 0 0.0216. And then we'll just add them together for total area. Or means either or. So 5620 plus 0216. And we get about 0.5836 for the area. So just make sure you definitely draw the curve for the ands and the ors. Um, let's try one more. Um, the mean is still 8.5. And then we want to find the area less than eight. Let's do greater than eight or less than 12. So greater than eight will be anything greater than eight, so to the right of eight. So shade everything to the right or less than 12. So 12 is over here, less than 12 will be the left side. And then or means either or. So I'm just going to add all the pieces. So option one is we could find all these pieces and add them up. But I noticed that I shaded the whole curve. So the area is the whole curve or one. We're done. We don't even have to use normal CDF. So the picture saved us a lot of time. So a few notes. I don't know if you've noticed if some of the examples we've used greater than, some we've used greater than or equal. Um, so in chapter five, it is a big deal for discrete random variables. It does make a difference whether the endpoint is included, right? Great, um, less than one just means zero. It means probability of zero but less than or equal to one would mean zero or one because only whole numbers were possible. But with continuous data, everything flows really nicely. So it actually really doesn't make a difference if you say or equal or not. And that has to do with the continuity of the curve because everything just flows. But when we have gaps, it makes a big difference. So for discrete random variables, it does make a difference whether endpoint is included or not. But for continuous data, like normal distribution, it does not make a difference. So P of Z greater than one would actually be the same as greater than or equal to one. It's only for continuous data.